Hi guys, welcome to another Blender Ignite tutorial by Ryan Grzyak. In this script tutorial, I'm going to be showing you dynamic colors within Blender's game engine. Before I continue, it has been a very long time since the last tutorial. I just want to let you guys know that I'm still here, but I have been developing a game since then. I didn't realize how complicated they can get. It has certainly taught me a lot and I thought it would give me a bit more experience, be able to tell more tutorials based on some of the information I've learned. I sort of found this technique, I thought it would be pretty cool, and so I just wanted to share it with you guys. So, what is Dynamic Colors? Well, what it does is it takes a color and it rotates around the color wheel by shifting its hue and allows it to cycle through that. Let me show you how this works you can see here that the monkey, which is Blender's mascot, is rotating with colors within a specific hue range. And it's rotating by this color mode and by the speed. So the faster the speed, if I change this to say 0.5, you will see that it will rotate it a lot quicker. Now this is being controlled by the object color. Now the object color, before you link up this script, needs to be set going under the material settings, scrolling down, and making sure object color is enabled. Without this option, it will not run in the Blender game engine, the script, or this object color. So you can see when I select this object color, basically what is happening is that this color value is rotating around the color wheel in a circle going through all the different values on this wheel. And you can see that these sliders are going all over the place, so I thought that it would be a pretty difficult script to write. Um, but then I found that you, what you can do is that if this color is down here, all you have to do is move one of these sliders down and the other one up. So by doing this, you can take that and rotate it around the color wheel. And by doing it this fashion, you can get the, the picker all the way around. But it started to get difficult, and I wanted to do it with different saturations, so how um, colorful a color is. And then I found out that there is another mode called HSV. Now, it was, it was difficult to get working in the game engine, but it actually made the process a lot simpler because this hue slider actually goes around in an exact circle. So that means that all I have to do is change this hue wherever this point is, that hue will go around. And that is affected by the saturation of that color. And so combining with these two allows you to have great control over this color. So when you set this to hue, all you have to do is pick your color, it will take into account your saturation and hue, and then we'll start it going around from that point. And so these color modes are actually affected by these names. So we have hue, we have saturation, and we have value. And value, or lightness, is light and dark. You can actually put in these modes into this. So I'm gonna just change this to saturation. And that will just mean that when you have a color here, you'll actually go from white to the darkest color of that color. So when I push play, you'll see that it goes to dark blue and then to white. And by cycling through that, you will get your object color. That is saturation, and changing this to value will make that exact color go from black to white, still using that color. Hopefully those will be useful in some way, but I think hue will be the most common and used feature. There is one more feature that I have added, and that is called random. And basically, it just picks random colors from whatever point that you have here, whatever saturation value, and will pick different colors along that. So it will just cycle through those, and you can change that via the speed. So those are the modes here. You might be saying, is that the extent of what the script can do? And 
yes, at a script level, but we still have more control in another way. And let me show you that. Right here is the object color, and that's sort of what we're affecting. But on top of that, we have a material color. So if you come under here to the material settings and go up to the diffuse panel, this color will be able to override whatever values you have on your monkey. So if you click on the diffuse color and you pull this down, say, to a, a more blue color, now when you push play, it will actually rotate or cycle through the colors within that hue value. So you can see that the extent is going from blue to purple to light blue, and so those colors are being affected around this range. And so you can change it using the object color. The lighter the saturation, the less it will have an impact on the main color. So you can make it vibrate a slight color or a deeper color. So that can help you to have greater control because now when you push play, you can see that ever so slightly it's just shifting color within its color that you set here. So that is a pretty neat feature. Um, you can also have multiple materials. So let me just add another one. I'm going to just call this one eyes. And this here, I'm going to set up for the eyes. So I'm just going to select the faces around here and here. These are just the monkey's eyes. Click on the eyes and assign it. And then you can see that the eyes have now been separated into a new material. And if you push play, you will see, I'm going to make this a bit more stronger. So I'm going to pull this object color down a bit. And I'm going to just pull back this color so we can get really random values. And if you push play, you can see that the eyes do not switch colors. But what if you wanted them to switch colors, but you just wanted to make them a sort of a, a darker color? Well, make sure that you select on the eyes scroll down to the object color and now the script will affect it. So you can see with these eyes here if you switch this over to maybe a darker blue you can still see that it's changing color. It's hard to see with the relationship of the object but it is switching and changing colors with the script below. So you can use multiple materials or override them using the diffuse color. So that's pretty much all there is for the script. We have hue, saturation, value, and random, and with the speed, just controls how fast that value will rotate within the script. Now I wanna show you one other feature for the script mode, because right now all you have to do is hook it up to an always and a Python, and just type in the name of the script followed by dot run, and that will run the module of the script instructions will be on the script heading, you'll be able to see that the script is not actually in Blender. So if I come under here, open up a new window and go to the text editor, there is no scripts under the script panel. So where is it? Well, I actually found out recently that you can actually pull the scripts into the same file or directory that the Blender file is at. So this is the one that we're running, this is the script, and what it does is it creates a pi cache. And the cool thing about this is you will see that it says .pyc. And pyc just means Python compiled. And all you need to know is it makes it faster for running in the game. So that is a very neat feature. Um, so basically, all you have to do is drop the script into the directory that you have the file and you will be able to just link it up and Blender will know once you switch this to module mode where that is. Well, that's pretty much it for the script. I hope you guys will be able to find this useful in your games. My name is Ryan Grisiak and I'll see you next time.